Thanks for tuning in to another video. Uh, today I have the Samsung Fit 3 and this is the tips and tricks video. I did a full video recently and I'll leave that in the description if you're interested in that. And I don't have any promo screen here so I'll just get right into it. So this is a fitness band. So let me show you some of the fitness features here. First, we're gonna show you how to customize the workout data. So I have the double press uh, feature on this to open up my exercises. So let's do that. And then you can see the exercises here. And if I click on the gear on any of these exercises, this is walking, but I have my target. And I can click on this and I can change the target to duration, distance, or calories. Then I can change that amount. If I click on duration here, I could change my duration. I could do the same thing for calories and distance as well. Now, another big feature that you might want to customize on this is your workout screen. So if you click on this, this gives you your workout screen. Some exercises only have one, but this one does have two. And then you have the heart rate uh, zone on the bottom here, and it will automatically group your heart rate uh, target zones. So if I click on walking, I'll just show you here. So this is your first workout screen. This is your second workout screen. And then this is your heart rate zones. And again, it will automatically categorize your heart rate zones for you. Let's just end that. Then we're going to go back into this gear here and we're going to go into the workout screens. So again, I have the data screens here. If I click on this one, this is my data one. And you can see here I have four different possible layouts. So right now it has the three there. So if I scroll up, I got three different categories I can put on there. But if I click over here, this would be seven. And then you can see here a lot more data on there, but they're a little smaller and maybe a little tougher to read. But you could also adjust all these. So if you don't want some of this stuff, you could just click on it here. Instead of duration, you can click on any of these things here which is a nice option. Then when you have this customized, this will customize just for that exercise. So this right now is for walking, but then I could change this for, for swimming or workout or free weights or anything like that. And I can change the different data that I have displayed, which is really nice. So the other setting I like to customize is scroll down here and screen always on here. So if you click this on, so that means anytime you're working out, this, the data screens will always be on, which kills the battery a little bit, but it does make it easier so you can just glance down and see all the data. You don't have to raise your wrist or tap the screen or anything like that. You'll always be able to see it. Okay, so now let's just see what we could do about changing these exercises. So these are all the ones I have listed here. Now, if I want to delete some of these, all I'd need to do is just hold one. I could do it. And then you just click on it and, you know, click remove, and then that will remove that exercise. Now, if you want to add some, just scroll all the way down to the bottom here, hit add. And then these are all the exercises that are listed. I mean, there's like 100 exercises, so it's a lot to scroll through. So if you don't want to do that, you can go to categories here and it breaks it up a little bit. And then, you know, if you want to do water exercises, those are the ones that are available. And then you can just click on one of those to add it if you'd like. Now, you can't uh, move the exercises up or down or rearrange them at all. You could do that in the app, but there was a little glitch on that. So I'll show you that in a moment. So we do have a single button, but it does have three functions. So if you're off of the home screen and just click it once, you'll go back to the home screen. If you click it twice, you could set it to do whatever you want. Right now, like I said, I have it set to open up the exercises. Then if you press and hold it, it brings up like your power screen and your emergency screen here. So you could turn it off, make an emergency call or medical info. And and I'll get into the medical info a little bit uh, later in the video. But for now, let's just customize what our double press does. So to do that, we go into settings. Then we're going to scroll down here to advanced settings right here, or advanced features. And then scroll down and double press. So if you click on this, these are the features you have. Those two there, and then any app that you want that is on the watch, you could set to toggle on automatically when you do the double press here. And so we have some tiles and widgets. Let's go into those. So if you just swipe over this way, you get into them. And if you want to adjust these, you can. So if you just hold this over here, it opens up this little uh, menu here, and then you could move them to wherever you want. You just kind of adjust it if you want. If you like it in that spot, just tap the screen and it does that. If you don't like the tile, you could just delete it, hit it, and now it's gone. Then you could hold 12 different tiles on here. I'm just going to scroll all the way to the end. Then if you scroll to the end, you could add tiles. So if you just hit the plus sign here, these are the ones that are available that you didn't see on the screen. Not that many, but enough to give you all the information that you need, I think. Now, the quick tiles on the top here and the apps over here, you can do nothing to edit them or rearrange them on the watch. You can customize these on the phone further, and I'll show you how to do that in the Galaxy app uh, towards the end of the video. Okay, so this is just a, a fun little tip, I think. So if you scroll down here, we got a flashlight, right? So you turn that on. Obviously, we've got the flashlight, and we can change uh, the brightness. If it goes away like that, you just tap it, and again, you can kind of move that up and down if you want. But uh, kind of a cool feature is, I don't know, this red strobe light that it 
looks kind of yellow on the video, but that's a, a red strobe light that you get in case you're having problems or something like that. Someone might be able to see that, hopefully. But I thought that was kind of neat. So again, this is a fitness band, so maybe you're using this to keep track of your food intake and your water intake and all that kind of stuff. So let me just show you how to do that. We scroll up here, we go into our Samsung Health app, and then we scroll down, and let's see here. Uh, we're going to go into food, click on that, and you could just enter. This is basically just a quick enter. You could do a little bit more on the app, and I'll show you that in a moment. But you can click on, you know, which meal it is, right? Uh, you know, whatever you want to do here. And then you could just click the amount of calories that you had at that meal, and then it's done. So that's how you can add that quick kind of on the fly. Then we have water. So if you go on here and you click on this, this will, every time you click on it, it adds uh, 8.5 more ounces. So if you click on that, now I drank 17 ounces, right? But if you don't want that cup size or you want to change your target or something like that, just go here. We could change uh, the cup size to anything here, and you could even do a new cup size if you want. If you what you want, it is not there. And if you scroll up here, we could also, again, set the target, and you could pick, you know, how many ounces you want to drink there. So that's kind of a great feature. Okay, so let me show you a little bit more on the app of what you can do. This is available for any Samsung watch that you have. Let's just click on it, and there's some more features about your food and water intake. Let me just show you that. So we're going to scroll down here to food. So if you click on this, and you click these three dots up here, you could set a target, and then you can customize your foods. So let's click on that. These are foods. We didn't customize anything, and there's no meals that we customized. But if we click here and add, now I could add a food name, you know, whatever it might be, and then I could add nutrients. So I think this would be good like if you have a you know, granola bar or something like that every day, you can look up it once to put all the data in there. And then you could just click on that anytime you eat it. So you don't have to re-enter all this data, which is nice. Then if you click on meals here, you could add one. Again, you could name a new meal and you could add all the details of what's in that meal right here. So if we go back to the beginning here, we hit enter meal and then let's say it's breakfast. And then these are, you know, uh, frequently added breakfast and then you can click on one of these if that's what you are doing if not you could just click on here and search for something so if you just had a, a bagel this morning right we could search for that and then it gives you different options and then you could pick it and you know that will give you the calories and all the nutrients and everything that's in there We're kind of already preset which is kind of nice right so you can keep a lot of uh, detailed data on your food intake if you have the energy and the dedication to do that you can do it uh, but the one that people probably use a little more often is the water intake here and again this is the same thing that's on the watch you could just click on this to add to it but if you want to change your target you can click on here at that and then you could change whatever the amount is that you want for the day and then you could get reminders if you want to set that as well and then if you want to change your cup size again you could do that and then you could check uh, whatever cup size that you want Okay, so now this watch does not have a speaker on it, so we will not get any audio alerts or chimes or anything like that, but we can adjust the vibration pattern a little bit. Now, as I said in my full review, the vibration is a little bit weak, so if you're you know, having this wake you up in the morning or something like that, it may not quite do it, but let me show you a couple of things you could do to hopefully make it a little bit stronger. So let's do that. We're going to go into settings here, and then go down to, obviously, vibration. And then uh, you could turn it off if you want, obviously. But then you have the vibration here. Click on it. And you could change it from short to long. And then you could also change it from light to strong. And let me go back and show you a couple other options here. Uh, so you got the vibration for calls and notifications. You can change the pattern for each of these individually. So if you click on this one, these are different patterns that you could have. So we'll just kind of vibrate several times. And then you could also do the notification for all the other notifications. And you could do this. You can click on one of these that give you several vibrations in a row, so that might be enough to kind of wake you up, hopefully, in the morning. Another feature that I like that not every watch has is if the watch gets disconnected from the phone, you will get an alert. And that happens because the watch is connected through Bluetooth to your phone, and Bluetooth only works for up to about 30 feet. So if you get about 30 feet away from your phone, it will give you a disconnection notice. This would be nice if you, you know, at a restaurant or a store or something like that, and you just happen to put your phone down for a moment, and then you kind of walk away. You get 30 feet, the watch will alert you, and then hopefully you remember, oh, I left my phone, let me go get it. And hopefully you get it uh, quick enough before someone steals it. So that's a nice dark view of humanity. But let me show you how to set that up. So this is uh, the settings uh, screen here. We're going to go into advanced features, and it's right on top. So disconnection alerts. So when you get a disconnection, you can either turn it on, just the vibration, or you can have the screen turn on and give you a vibration, just to maybe give you a little more notification that, hey, go get your phone. It's left behind. So speaking of notifications, there's two features that I like to have. I like to have this little red dot there. And most watches have that feature to let you know that you do have a message that you missed. Then the second thing is I like it when I do get a notification for the watch screen to turn on. Even if I have it off, I like to get the vibration in the screen to turn on so I can just glance at it and see if it's something that I need to address. So let me show you how to find that.
We're going to go into settings here, and it's going to be in notifications. Then we're going to scroll all the way down here to advanced uh, settings, click on that. And then the notification indicator, that's the red dot. You could turn that on and off if you like it or don't like it. Then the other thing I didn't tell you about is that show with details. So if you click this off and then you get a text from somebody, the only thing you're going to get is a little icon for the message app and then, uh, you know, who texted you. Basically, that just means you get the notification and then you got to go check on your phone to see if it's something you need to address or, you know, respond back to or something like that. But if you have this toggled on, that means when you get the notification, you'll get the app and you'll get the who it's from. And you'll also get, you know, the, the text enough, whatever can fit on the screen here. I think then this is where you turn on the screen. So even if the screen is off, it will turn on. So you don't have to tap the screen or raise your wrist or look for what notification it is. You can just glance at the watch without moving and it will give you the information about the notification, which I really like. Another nice feature that I like to uh, use is the sleep mode. So if we could just scroll down here and press and hold the sleep icon, and now you could turn it on whenever you want. And then you could also turn it on as scheduled, which is actually kind of nice. This is what will happen in sleep mode. You can see that right there. And let me just show you on the phone. So the most visible thing on sleep mode is if you turn it on, you get the gray screen here, which is actually really nice. If you are, uh, you could schedule this so this turns on at bedtime. And if you are watching a video or reading an article or something like that, you get the gray screen, which will give you an alert that, hey, it's time to go to bed. Okay, obviously, you probably want to modify your display settings here. So let's go into that and I'll show you what's available. We're going to go into settings here and we'll just find display. And here we could modify the brightness and you could turn the adaptive brightness on so the screen will get lighter and darker depending on the lighting situation that you're in so you got the always on display you could toggle that on and off now just keep in mind if you do toggle the always on display this actually really does kill the battery on this watch i mean it might cut the battery down in half so it, unless you really like it i'd probably keep it off so this is how you turn on your screen you could raise your wrist to wake it or you could touch the screen and you could toggle either of these on and off and then you also have the show media controls so basically if you are uh, you know playing music or watching youtube or something like that you'll have the media controls automatically show up on the screen and you could you know toggle the volume and go to the next track and all that kind of stuff so uh, this didn't always work for me for some reason and uh, i'm not sure if it's a glitch or if it's just because this is the international version of the watch and i live in the united states leave it in the comments if you had any issues with that as well and then also you could toggle your screen timeout, which would save battery, obviously, if you have a, a quicker timeout on that. And you could uh, modify the screen timeout, but 30 seconds is the most. And if that media playback doesn't work automatically, it's not that big of a deal. When you're playing music on your phone, you'll always get a little note down here and you can just tap on it. And then it would automatically take you to the screen to music playback. And then again, you could do all the toggles on that. Okay, so let's go into all the health settings that you can modify. If you scroll down here, hit uh, settings, and we're going to go into health. And we got heart rate. Let's start there. These are the only options that you have here. Measure it continuously, 10 minutes, or manually. Now, uh, some other watches do have it a little more frequently of a measurement, like, you know, one minute, five minutes, or something like that, uh, instead of just these two. But uh, it is what it is. The nice thing about this watch is you could have your high heart rate and low heart rate alerts, even though you have it only set to every 10 minutes, where a lot of other watches require you to set the uh, frequency to every minute or every five minutes. That's a nice thing. And then you could also change uh, the amount that you want here. You could, you know, scroll it to whatever you want. And we have the stress feature. If we click on that, again, continuously or manually only. And then we have sleep. We can turn the uh, SpO2 monitoring on uh, at night. So for some reason, you can always only turn on the SpO2 measurement while you're sleeping. Uh, during the day, there is no way to turn it on. So if you're looking for that feature, it doesn't exist on this watch. As of now, that might change with the software update. But you'd have to do a manual measurement if you want to do that during the day. But you could toggle this on to measure the SpO2 during sleeping. And then you could also toggle the snore detection on and off. And we also got some other uh, nice health features and emergency stuff on here that most other watches don't have. So let's go into settings and let me show you those. We're going to go into safety and emergency. So if you click on this, I don't have any medical info set, but if you did, it would show up right here. Then the emergency contacts, you can't set on the watch. You can only set it on the phone. So I'll show you how to do that in a minute. The emergency SOS, from what I saw, there's no way to disengage that. So what that is, is if you tap this button five times quickly, it will send an emergency text to the emergency contact that you have listed. You can also set that to make an emergency phone call if your watch is nearby, because the, this does not have any uh, phone capabilities. And then hard fall detection. And now, for some reason, this was toggled off when you get the watch. So you might want to look into this menu and turn this on. But you can turn it on and off. And if you turn it on, you have some options here. If you click on this, you can have it set to always detect it when you fall during physical activity, you know, when you're just doing anything or only doing workouts. So you can decide which one you want to set that for. So the last tip I want to show you here on the watch is how to set up a lock screen. So if you go on here and just hit settings, we got to scroll down to uh, security and privacy and click on that. 
So you get your lock type. So right now I have none. If you click on it, then you could set a, set a pin or none. Some some watches you could do a pattern, but for some reason you can't on this one. Now this is nice is if you do uh, if the watch detects that it's not on your wrist anymore and you're not wearing it, you put it on a table or something like that, and someone picks it up, they will not be able to access the watch or use it, which is nice. Now it's not that big of a feature on this watch because you don't have that much data on here. You know you don't have your contacts or payment information or anything stored on here, so it's not the end of the world if you lost it. But still, if someone stole your watch, you don't want them to be able to use it, right? And then there's one more feature on this one. This is wrist detection. So I toggle this on because when you take the watch off, then the watch won't do any vibration alerts. So if the watch is in one room and you're in another, but it's still connected to your phone, this won't be vibrating, which uh, is nice because if someone's in the room with the watch, they won't constantly be hearing it vibrate if you get a lot of notifications, but also the person in the room would be able to see the notifications on the watch. So you may not want everyone reading your notifications. Those are all the tips and tricks on the watch. So let me show you a couple of things that you could do in the Galaxy app that, are, that you're not able to do on the watch. Okay, so this is the Gear app. Let me just show you that here. This is immediately familiar to anyone who had a Samsung watch before. It's very similar. So if you just click on this, this gives you your watch faces. And as I went over in my full video, which I'll again leave it in the description, there are no uh, color changes on this. So they show you a watch face here and there is different colors available, but you're not able to change it to any other colors. Then the other issue is there is no shortcuts on here. So if you click on uh, this, like the date here, or if you were to click on, you know, your calories or something like that, on some watches, it would take you to that app and you get more details. But on this one, that doesn't work. And you're also not able to change any complications on any of these watches. So if you want this to be uh, the weather instead of the date, you can't do that. You'd actually have to find a watch face that has uh, the weather as a complication on there. So it is a little limited, but it does have uh, over 100 watch faces here. Let's get back to here. This is the app screen. So these are all the apps that are on the watch and you can't delete them and you can't add any new ones, obviously, because this is all of them that you get. But you can move them if you want. So if you click on this, you could just kind of change the order and move them what you want. Now it'll automatically transfer over to the watch. So there's not all that much you could do with the apps. We're just going to cancel that. And now we're going to go into the tiles. And I showed you this, you could actually adjust on the watch. So these, uh, you could move and relocate if you want on the watch very easily. And if you want to do it here, you just push it. And then again, scroll it, you know, to wherever you want. You could minus these. So that means it will get rid of them off your watch. And then these are the other tiles that are available. Not that many, but enough for you to see. And again, you could hold 12 up here. So let's go into the quick panel here. On the watch, you're not able to do anything here, but on the phone, you could delete them if you want, like that. Now it's down here, and then I could add it back if I wanted to. And then if I want to move these, I just push and hold it, and then I could, you know, relocate it to wherever I want. Let's get into the settings. Okay, so we got modes here. So if you click on modes, this is nice if you have a Samsung watch, because the modes that you have set on your phone will automatically transfer to the watch. So uh, if you click on here, these are all the ones that are already set on there, and you could. this is one I just added uh, just to test some things out. But all these modes could do different things. So like a good example of this would be work mode. So you could have it set so that when you get to the location of work, it will toggle on, or you could have it scheduled to turn on. And maybe you have it set when you get to work that, you know, you have a do not disturb on there, or you have it set, uh, your ringtone set to vibrate, or you have the Wi-Fi turned off, or, you know, some other settings you could modify because you don't need them at work. But anything you do on the phone, that would automatically transfer to the watch. Now, you know, Wi-Fi doesn't transfer because there is no Wi-Fi in the watch. But if you wanted to put a Do Not Disturb on there, that would transfer over to the watch and so that you wouldn't get any notifications on the watch. Uh, so little things like that will uh, transfer over nicely. Now, notifications. Uh, this is basically everything that's available on the watch that we already went over. It's the same exact menu. Vibration, same thing. It might just be easier for you to adjust it on the phone because it's easier to see. But uh, the display, again, same settings that were on uh, the watch. Samsung Health, again, same settings. We went through all these. Safety and emergency. Now, this is uh, the settings that are available on the watch, but you can't do anything on the watch. You only could adjust them on the phone. So we have medical info. Click on that, and this is all the information that's available. And you can see there's a lot of details that you can put on there. So if you did have a fall or if you toggled the emergency contact, then this information would appear even on the lock screen. So the medical personnel will be able to access all that information. Then your emergency contacts would be here. And if you click on this, you could add any contact that you have in your phone. Then this is the fall detection. Again, you could turn this on or off, and then you have the same options here. Then advanced features. This is, again, the same thing that was on the watch. You have the disconnection alerts, which I really like. And then you can customize the double press of the button that's on the watch. Now, if you scroll all the way down here, this is actually pretty hidden. But if you click on General, this is where you can modify your text responses.
And you can see here there's two categories, one for the text that you get, and then one for uh, to reject a phone call. So if you click on this one, these are all the texts that I have. If I get a text, this is what I would have to respond with. I can add one very easily, and you can see how I can only add up to 30 characters in there. Now if you want to edit them, just click on this, and now I could move them very easily if I want to do that. But if I click on this, now I could delete these. So I can't edit this actual text and add more characters there, but I could just delete it and then add a new text of whatever I want. So if you go into reject calls, so I could have a completely different set of texts over here. And obviously that's a good idea because if you get in a phone call, you might want to have different things to say. So remember the fit three cannot take or make phone calls, but if you do get a phone call, you could decline it or you could decline it with a text. And this is the same thing here. You could add messages if you want, or you could edit them and, you know, move them around, do whatever you want there. So that's actually kind of hidden, I thought. It should be a little more prominent because that's kind of a big feature of the watch that most people probably use. But that is all the tips and tricks and features of the Samsung 3 that I could think of that you would probably be interested in. If you have any others, put it in the comments. I'd appreciate that. So my channel does a lot of reviews of watches, phones, uh, tech gadgets, things like that. And I also do a lot of how-to videos and a lot of tips and tricks kind of videos. So if that's of any interest to you, please consider subscribing. I'll leave a link in the description of where you can buy the Samsung 3 on Amazon. And that will give you the current cheapest price and it will help support the channel at no additional charge for you. So I'd really appreciate that. And thank you for watching and I will see you on the next video video.